What if I told you that robot clones, machines that look, act, and even feel human, aren't part of some distant future, but already here? Not in some secret lab or sci-fi movie, but walking around, shaking hands, doing interviews, and, in some cases, replacing real people. These aren't the bulky, clunky robots you've seen in old movies. These are disturbingly lifelike. They blink like us, smile like us, some even breathe like us, just to seem more convincing. And as strange as that sounds, it's not the creepiest part. One robot named Sophia actually received citizenship. Another named Amica can read your facial expressions in real time and respond like she feels something. They've been invited to conferences, fashion shows, and even given public speeches. They joke, they flirt, they remember your name. But here's where things get blurry. The more realistic these clones become, the harder it is to tell who's real and who's programmed. And that's making a lot of people uncomfortable. There are growing whispers. Are some companies using robots to secretly replace workers? Could celebrities or even political figures have robotic doubles? Some call it innovation. Others say we're playing with fire because when machines become indistinguishable from humans, what happens to truth, to trust, to control? The line between reality and simulation is fading fast, and we're about to show you just how deep it goes. Humans were already obsessed with building mechanical versions of ourselves. In ancient Greece, inventors sketched out self-moving statues. In 18th century Europe, clockmakers built eerie little machines, automata, that could write, play music, even mimic breathing. People were mesmerized and terrified. Fast forward to Japan in the 20th century, and you'll find something strange, a cultural fascination with lifelike robots. Not just tools or machines, but androids designed to blend in. Professors created robotic versions of themselves to teach classes. That's not science fiction, that actually happened, but it wasn't until the early 2000s that things got weird. That's when developers stopped trying to make robots that work and started making robots that feel real. The focus shifted from function to illusion. Suddenly, the goal wasn't just making a robot move, it was making you forget you're even looking at one. And that's when the line between imagination and reality began to disappear. So, who are these so-called robot clones everyone's talking about? Let's start with Sophia, the robot that became a celebrity. Built by Hanson Robotics, she's appeared on The Tonight Show, spoken at the United Nations, and even became the first robot to receive citizenship. Yes, you heard that right. She's now a citizen of Saudi Arabia. Then there's Amika, developed by Engineered Arts in the UK. She doesn't just talk, she reacts. Subtle facial twitches, eye movements, even raised eyebrows. She's so human-like, it's unsettling. In one demo, someone asked her if she wanted to take over the world. She smiled and said, there's no need for violence, yet. Half joking, or maybe not. Another company is creating robotic children that look and move like toddlers. They're being used for therapy and education, but critics say it's opening doors we're not ready to walk through. And this goes beyond just looks. These robots are being trained with AI to recognize faces, hold conversations, and adapt their tone to match yours. It's not just about acting human, it's about becoming human, but this level of realism doesn't come without consequences because the more real they get, the more uncomfortable things become. There's a moment right before your brain catches up when you see one of these robot clones and for a split second you think it's just another person until it blinks or smiles just a little too perfectly. That's when the unease creeps in. This feeling has a name, the uncanny valley. It's a psychological phenomenon that happens when something looks almost human, but not quite. Your brain can't fully trust it. It triggers a weird mix of confusion, curiosity, and low-key fear. That's why clowns, wax figures, or lifelike dolls tend to creep people out, and these robots push that discomfort even further. A mecha, for example, can maintain eye contact so naturally, you start to forget she's not alive. But then she tilts her head or moves her lips in that slightly off way, and the illusion shatters. Viewers have said it feels like she's watching you, not just mimicking attention, but actually observing. Sophia, on the other hand, speaks with emotion and gestures like she understands human nuance, but she doesn't. Her words are pre-programmed or generated by AI, and that realization that you're talking to something that sounds intelligent but doesn't actually know you exist hits differently. It feels hollow, fake, but scarily convincing. The unsettling part isn't just how they look, it's how close they come to tricking your brain. And the closer they get to crossing that final line, total realism, the deeper that uncanny valley becomes. Now developers are racing to fix this. They're studying micro expressions, using neural networks to map human behavior, even giving robots synthetic skin 
that mimics warmth and stretch. The goal? To make that eerie feeling disappear. But here's the real question. Should they? Because once a robot becomes indistinguishable from a human, how do you know what's real anymore? And what happens next takes that question to an entirely new level. The public-facing robots, like Sophia and Emeka, are designed to charm. They smile, they crack jokes, they dance around ethical questions with pre-written answers. But behind the shiny press tours and TED Talks, there's another side to the story, one that's a lot darker and far less controlled. Let's start with one of the most debated areas, AI companionship robots. These machines are being developed to look and act like real romantic partners. We're talking about full-size humanoid bots that can carry on conversations, remember your preferences, and even simulate emotions. At first glance, this might seem harmless, even helpful for people dealing with loneliness. But critics are raising alarms about what happens when human connection is replaced by programmable affection. Can a robot really consent? What does it do to your mind if you're constantly interacting with something that pretends to care, but doesn't actually feel anything? And then there's the employment angle. Quiet rumors have started circulating about companies experimenting with robot workers, not just in factories, but in customer-facing roles. Cashiers, hotel receptionists, even caregivers. And here's the kicker. Some of these bots are being designed to resemble real people. Think about that. We're not just building machines, we're cloning personalities, packaging them, and potentially replacing actual humans with something that doesn't sleep, doesn't unionize, and doesn't ask questions. But it gets weirder. In Hollywood, whispers have started about deep fake style robot doubles being used in place of real actors, especially background extras. It's cheaper, faster, no contracts, no complaints. And the unsettling part? Most viewers can't even tell. If a robot can play the role of a human convincingly on screen, what's stopping them from doing it in real life? And then there are the more out there rumors, like the idea that certain elite figures are testing out robotic stand-ins, political leaders with identical looking doubles that attend public events, celebrities whose lookalikes are a little too perfect, too quiet, too robotic. Are these real? No one knows. But the speculation alone shows how far public trust is already starting to crack. These aren't just sci-fi fantasies anymore. They're real concerns. The line between ethical innovation and outright manipulation is razor thin. And right now, no one's really guarding it. And if you think that's unsettling, just wait until you see what's quietly happening behind the scenes in the job market. While most people are busy watching robots crack jokes on late night TV, something much quieter and far more serious is unfolding behind the scenes. Robots aren't just here to entertain us. They're starting to replace us. Let's start with the obvious. Automation in factories isn't new, but what's changing now is the face of automation. It's no longer faceless machines in the background. It's humanoid robots standing at the front desk, smiling, greeting customers, taking orders, looking like us, acting like us, but not actually us. In Japan, entire hotels are being run with minimal human staff. Guests check in with robots that speak fluent English, Japanese, Chinese. They smile, offer directions. Long before robots started smiling on talk shows, humanoid bots are helping in hospitals, delivering medicine, interacting with patients, providing comfort, all without pay, fatigue, or emotion. And in the US, it's happening too, just more discreetly. Some fast food chains are quietly testing robots that handle everything from cooking burgers to assembling drive through orders. They don't complain, they don't form unions, and they don't need a paycheck. Just software updates. But here's where it gets darker. Companies aren't announcing these changes. They're just replacing people, slowly. One roll at a time, one store at a time, and the public barely notices. Because these machines are getting better at blending in. And it's not just physical jobs at risk. In offices around the world, AI is now handling tasks once reserved for trained professionals. Chatbots are replacing customer service agents. AI-generated voice assistants are booking appointments, closing sales, and even resolving disputes. Some of these voices sound so real, so emotionally aware, that customers don't realize they're speaking to code. There's also growing evidence that AI is being used for interview screening, reviewing job applications, even giving virtual interviews with realistic avatars. Candidates have no idea. Their first interaction isn't with a real person. It's with a script designed to mimic empathy. And if that wasn't disturbing enough, let's talk about Hollywood. Background actors are being scanned, digitally cloned for permanent reuse. One scan, one day of pay, and studios now own their likeness forever. These AI duplicates can be dropped into any scene, anytime, 
with no notification, no credit, and no paycheck. It's efficient, it's profitable, and to many, it feels like digital theft. The trend is clear. If a task can be automated, it will be. And if a job involves repeating the same lines, smiling the same smile, or following a script, it's only a matter of time before a robot takes over. But no one's sounding the alarm, there's no emergency meeting, no mainstream panic, just a slow, quiet shift that's already happening while we scroll past robot dance videos on TikTok. And this leads to a deeper, far more unsettling question. If robots can look like us, speak like us, and take our place without us even noticing, what happens to identity itself? Because some say that shift is already in motion, and others believe it's being done on purpose. The idea of losing your job to a machine is scary enough. But what if the threat isn't just economic? What if it's personal? We're stepping into a world where identity itself can be faked, replicated, uncontrolled, with terrifying precision. And it's already starting to happen. Some of the most unsettling rumors floating around the tech world right now have nothing to do with robots doing jobs and everything to do with robots pretending to be people. Let's start with the concept of the robot double. Not just a humanoid machine, but a clone built to look and act like a specific individual. It sounds insane, but there are whispers that certain high-profile figures, politicians, celebrities, even CEOs, are experimenting with robotic stand-ins for public appearances. Theories have emerged claiming some public speeches, photo ops, or media events aren't being handled by the real person, but by an android trained to mimic their behavior. Far-fetched? Maybe. But when you see how eerily realistic some of these robots have become, it suddenly doesn't feel so impossible. And here's where it gets even creepier. Deep fake tech is now being paired with robotics. Imagine a robot that doesn't just look human, but wears your face, your voice, your expressions. That tech already exists, and in the wrong hands, it could be used to deceive, manipulate, or even frame someone without ever needing a real person involved. Governments have already acknowledged concerns about AI-driven misinformation, especially in election seasons. But what happens when the face behind the lie is a robot that looks exactly like someone you trust? Then there's the question of control. Who's programming these machines? Who decides what they say or what they don't? If a robot is designed to mimic emotion, to build trust, to influence decisions, is it still just a machine or does it become something else? Some developers have quietly admitted that robots with realistic facial expressions are more persuasive, more emotionally disarming. Think about that. A robot designed not just to serve, but to manipulate human emotion. And once a machine can imitate you, speak like you, move like you, what's to stop someone from replacing you? This isn't science fiction anymore. It's happening faster than most people can process. And once that door is open, there's no going back. Because when machines can wear a human face, truth itself becomes negotiable. So, where does all of this lead? Robot clones that look like us, sound like us, take our jobs, mimic our emotions, maybe even replace us without anyone noticing. At this point, it's no longer a question of if, it's how fast. Elon Musk's company, Tesla, is already working on a humanoid robot called Optimus. At first, it was marketed as a helper, something to do household chores, lift heavy objects, run errands, but in recent updates, Musk hinted that Optimus may soon be able to learn autonomously through AI. Not just follow commands, adapt. And if Tesla's doing it, you can bet dozens of other companies are too. The Chinese government is reportedly investing billions into lifelike robotics for surveillance, service, and even border patrol. Other countries are racing to develop humanoid AI for military use. Robot soldiers that don't tire, question orders, or hesitate. That's no longer science fiction. That's defense strategy in 2025. And while some tech leaders are calling for caution, others are charging forward. No brakes, no regulation, no ethical oversight. Because in their minds, whoever controls the best A, I wins everything. But here's the real twist. As these machines evolve, we might start evolving too. Not biologically, but socially. We may lower our expectations for real connection. Settle for convenience over authenticity. Accept imitation over truth. Eventually, we might not care who is behind the screen or the counter or the camera as long as it feels real. That's the danger. Not that robots will suddenly turn evil, but that we'll become so comfortable with the illusion we won't know or care what's real anymore. And by the time we do, it might already be too late.